So I have your pattern. Speaking of frames, <laughs> how many of you have frames with glass that you have picked up perhaps at garage sales or on special at your local craft store? And they're usually pretty much the same size, eight and a half by 11, eight by 10, four by six. Uh, if high you don't have them, start looking for them because this project is fabulous. Right, because you can get these for like 25 cents mm -hmm. and 50 cents. All you need is the frame and the glass. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is to need to grab some patterns, and Heidi grabbed my patterns. You can either take just um, a photograph and you can mm -hmm. sketch a pattern from it. There's uh, lots of great sources online for patterns. So what I want to do is show you how to reverse paint on glass. It's fabulous. The first thing that you will want to do is to remove your glass from your frame and give it a good cleaning. You will usually find that the frame glass has a coating on it that you want to be sure and clean off. The next thing you'll do is place your pattern underneath the glass. And the patterns can come from lots of different sources, stained glass books, make a great pattern for this technique. You can also trace a photograph of an actual flower and you're just tracing around the highlights of the flower so you can create your own pattern if you'd like to. I am using the Tulip Slick Paint and I'm choosing white for my design today because my finished project will have a very shabby chic look to it but you could certainly use any of the colors of the Tulip Slick Dimensional Paint. You want to tap that paint down into the tip and that's going to help to eliminate bubbles in the paint. If you get a bubble in it, it tends to spatter. You can fix that, but it's really great if, if you just tap it down first so that you don't have to worry about those bubbles. The next step is to start tracing and as you can see on this design I have lots and lots of lines to trace so I'll get started here. I'm holding the tip right down on the glass and be sure that you join any of the intersecting lines that's going to make it easier when you come back to paint this project. And I don't mind if my lines are a little bit thicker in one place or thinner in another. It's really just a matter of tracing right here. It, it's just like tracing in a coloring book, which is also another great source for patterns, depending on what sort of design that you want to do for your reverse painting. So just continue tracing your design until it's finished. While my large glass piece is drying, I want to show you how to do the reverse painting on this individual flower. What I have done on this piece is I've applied the Tulip Slick paint, let this dry overnight, and then we're ready to reverse paint. So keep in mind, you're looking at the back side of your piece, this is the front. But all of that painting is done in reverse. You may, when you apply your paint, have some areas where the tip has pulled back through. If you want to, you can use a craft knife to pull that paint up, but honestly, I just leave it the, the way that it is. But if you're really fussy about the detail on this, just use a craft knife to clean up those lines. I have my acrylic paints on my palette here and I have a couple of colors of pink and a really beautiful green, it's a eucalyptus green and an antique white and what's really cool about this technique is you can blend these together to get some other shading of colors and so just keep in mind if you do that, if you're mixing some of your own colors, that you mix enough so that you have enough to put on two coats of paint because I've found that I really do need two coats of paint. So you're just going to start 
filling in all of the areas of your design. So this is one coat and what happens when you turn it over is you will be able to see the brush stroke lines. And so I just let that dry and apply a second coat. You might want to plan in advance where you're putting your colors or just let it flow. <laughs> and you can see it's really easy to stay within the lines. And it doesn't matter if you overpaint the white on this side because this is the back side so you're not going to see that. But what you do want to be sure is that you color right up to the white line and fill in that entire area with the colors that you want. On these larger areas, I'm very generous with my paint color. So that it makes it a lot easier when I come back with my second coat of paint. Make sure you get it right up to the edge. Sometimes you have to turn it over to actually take a look to be sure that you haven't missed one little corner that still needs paint. So what you want to do at this point is continue painting your entire piece. By the time you get back around to where you started, that coat of paint is probably dry. You could also take your hair dryer to speed up the drying process in order to apply that second coat of paint. I am going to keep painting and show you the finished example. I have finished my painting and just a reminder this is the back side so it really doesn't look like much from this side but when you turn it over that is when you see your really cool design. There are a couple of different ways that you can finish the background. You can paint it with a solid color like I have done on my large floral design. Or let me share with you a couple of other different ideas. When it's time to put your glass back in the frame, I think it would be super cool to use scrapbook paper to the back. And you can see, depending on what paper you use, you can get a completely different effect. Now this one's really cool with the lettering in the background. That was an Eco Heidi selection. You, in this particular paper, you also can see some other designs, and I think that looks really good to the background also. Here's a funky look for you. I like this, actually, for a vintage look. This polka dot is really cool. And the back of one of these papers is a really bright pink. You might want to go in that direction. So, have fun, play around, redecorate, with reverse painting. What I love about the reverse painting is that you can create this no matter what style of decor that you have at home. You could take this same frame that you showed and you could put it on different fabrics or Oh, look at kind of look at, I like the bright red behind this it. This is kind of romance. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of shabby chic. Right, and that was the polka dots, which yes. is one of my actually that's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. so. It's my favorite too. Right. And you could but this is a little bit romantic too, but a little bit different with the pink and right. That. I want to sh hold that up because I don't think they can see it. We can, yeah. but it's that really bright pink which I just showed. But um, I have gone from beach to antique to contemporary, to artsy, to now it's shabby chic. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted something that have, I, I tend to when I design, no matter what I do, it tends to have a little bit of a contemporary style to it. Yes. So the patterns that I pick today, even though they're shabby chic colors, have a little bit of a contemporary look. So it's contemporary shabby chic. Okay. Okay. It works. It, wor it totally works because <laughs> I, I love the way that your room is turning out. I mean, the things that you're putting into it that uh, 
and this this totally works and yet it would still work in my house too mm -hmm. by putting something else behind it right reverse painting it as you can see it is so easy because all you're doing is just tracing a pattern mm -hmm. with your 3d paints your tulip 3d paint again it's an instant gratification it's one of those instant uh, wowie right you do have to let it set overnight that first step when you're tracing that glue but has I, to set. I think we all have to take little bits and we don't all have like two or three hours to create a project we need those little bits of time to create a project and as soon as it's done it, it is it's like a wow because we've taken that time for ourselves and for our homes you know what the gratification is for me is that this worked <laughs> you know really because there's a lot of projects that we do as designers that we try and try and do over and over again and by the time we actually come on air, it's like, I'm so tired of this project. <laughs> but that's what we do as designers, mm -hmm. to make it easier for you to create. Right. The reverse painting is one of those techniques that always works. Mm -hmm. And so we don't tire of it because there's the instant gratification. Mm -hmm. It's like, I know this is going to work. I know I can make this quickly. You know you can make your yarn base mm -hmm. quickly and easily. Right. It's, I'm, I'm going to have that instant gratification mm -hmm. no matter what.